How's it going everybody? Derek from Make Media Studios and today I'm here with Joey Palmrose. He is in Finland. He is a commercial videographer and a YouTuber that I follow. He's got a lot of insights when it comes to commercial videography and I'm really excited to talk with him today. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good, man. How are yourself? I'm doing all right. Hey, thanks for talking with me. What what time is it all the way over there? Uh, it's uh, it's 5 p.m. Yeah, man. No worries. Uh, sorry for postponing this. I, I I'd be wanting to do, do this with you for so for so long now. So well, hey, thanks thanks for being a fan. Finally and, um, happened. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Yes, it's about 7 a.m. here for me. So we got a big time difference here on. Uh, on the show. Oh, so. I made you. I made you wake up so early. Oh, I oh, actually. Sorry, my, sorry, no, my wife started work this morning at like 4 a.m. So I just started editing and doing things. So I've been up. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for everyone out there that doesn't know who you are, tell them a little bit. Tell introduce yourself. Who are you and what do you do? Ah, uh, well, me in a nutshell. Jeez. Uh, I'm a filmmaker from Finland. Uh, I'm in my 30s, early 30s, actually hitting 32 later this year, and um, I've been doing commercial filmmaking for about eight years now. Um, yeah, so I'm just a freelance filmmaker guy doing YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I hope that that sums everything up. <laughs> I mean, there's so much more I, I, like I can tell, but it's, I mean, we don't have two hours. No, it's three fine, hours, it's man. fine. Well, let me dig a little deep in there for you. For um, eight years, have you been doing commer like commercials for eight years, or where did you start? Yeah, so um, I started my commercial career in, in London. I lived in London for about four years. Okay. I studied there first. I studied film there for two years and um, then got this break to be a first AD for this Finnish filmmaker. And um, yeah, basically from there, just being his first AD throughout different shoots, like I got super familiar with bigger and bigger productions. And um, yeah, man, like while I was doing that, I just sort of started freelancing on site and okay. just building up my own portfolio and uh, yeah, man. Okay, yeah. when you were the first AD, what were you, what type of productions were you guys doing? Were they commercial or were they just like a wide range? Yeah, commercials, mm -hmm. commercials, yeah. So a lot of like bank commercials or just okay. like big um, food brands, ketchup brands or mobile phone ads or like you name it man like I was doing that in London and it was pretty hectic it was pretty cool to see like how a big production crew of like 60 people works yeah and how um like what actually goes into creating all these massive ads that you see on tv so that was pretty sweet and uh yeah that was sort of like me just like tipping my toe in the water yeah like for the first time and uh just seeing how it all works and it's, it's cool now to uh, because what I'm doing right now, I'm sort of doing like this one man production thing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and, um, and not with like 60 people. So it's cool to sort of have seen, you know, how do you say that? Like the difference sides of the, yeah, the boat world, so, sort of like how you do it like by yourself and then how it works with a big, big crew. I mean, there's definitely like pros and cons yeah. like, with both of them. Um, like when you, when I'm working by myself, it's it's up to me like when I work for how long I work I don't need any like lunch breaks or anything but like right. if you're working with a lot of people then like there's so many different things that things that like have to go down in consideration like how the production proceeds and so forth yeah yeah it's also speed I mean I I, I feel like with a big crew there's a lot of it's really nice right to have that big crew and all those moving parts yeah but but being by yourself is a little faster I mean, because it's kind of on your own time, kind of quick setups and go. Do you what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a little faster for sure, but at the same time, like, um, the responsibility is, like, you, you carry that. Yeah. Like, it's all up to you. Like, there's no other people that you can really rely on, so um, it definitely creates more tension and uh, stress, you might say. Yeah. But in the end, like, when you do succeed and when your clients like your work, it it's definitely like a nice frosting on top of the cake. Yeah, definitely. Like, and you want to like keep adding and do more of that as well. So, yeah, I definitely love what I do, and uh, I love the fact that like I got to experience like those bigger productions as well. Maybe I'll get to do those again in the future. Who knows? But like for now, and where I see the industry going, I definitely enjoy doing things my way now as well. Yeah, yeah. How um, 
dipping your toes into those commercials as that first AD, w- did you always know you wanted to make commercials or you didn't know? Um, yes and no. Like when I was younger, I think like everyone else, like I wanted, really wanted to like create big movies that you, yeah. <laughs> that, you yeah. go, that you go watch in the cinema, right? Yeah. But um, my, my dad was, my dad was and still is in advertising. So I actually got to experience like set life through him as well. And, um, you know, got the whole feel to what, you know, what productions are and the whole magic of it. Like I got to experience, experience that when I was pretty young. And um, later when I studied in film school and got that gig as a first AD, I definitely, grew like a big passion to commercial filmmaking where you only have a short amount of time to tell your story. Okay. And uh, the, like where I come from is very like visual storytelling. So for me, that fits perfectly to like what I want to show and do. So, okay. Yeah. So you definitely like the short form. I, I enjoy that as well. I like short form video. Yeah. I, I recently did a YouTube video called the art of the 15 second yep. commercial because I feel like during this past year, especially like what my clients have asked me to do are those 15 second ads. And, um, I don't know, for some reason, I, I feel like it's like people don't necessarily think about commercials as an art form, yeah. but I do hundred percent like me too. feel that way. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. And, um, no, I, I just think like there's something, you know, it's, by the way, you're going to cut these. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> me thinking parts no, out, you're right? Good, you're good. No, there's it's a, a the challenge. Sorry, I came from. You're like, good. You're good. Yeah. The challenge. I think that there's a challenge in trying to get your image, your, get your story and what you're selling across in 15 seconds. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And also like, how do you tell a compelling story in that time? Like yeah. where, you know, you keep your audience on their toes and sort of like, wanting to see more and not just skip to the next ad or next channel if you know if the ad is are if on running on tv or mm. yeah or on for youtube yeah, man, or something like, like it that is, it, it is really, an art form yeah and you want you want to you're trying to grab their attention and hold them through the entire ad and that's 15 seconds and you have to hold them there and make them interested in something that they can skip yeah 100 percent um yeah 100 percent. and then and then also like you got that like short production time always because clients want everything straight away right yep. so <laughs> you got you got those you know three to five weeks of production tops mm-hmm. and you gotta dazzle them well, in that time and i love to pick you know your, do something else that you haven't done before yeah i'd love to pick your brain on it a little bit when it comes to the production for you when it you know because i've worked mm-hmm. with a couple of clients myself but nothing you you're 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 handling a lot of clients at the same time but what is your production yeah. time frame what do you think? Like, do they send you a product? You film it? You know what I mean? Like, step me through it. At least for the viewer um, to find out a little more on, like, <laughs> what a production, commercial production for you is like. Yeah, so for me, I mean, every production obviously is different. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the time I get brands reaching out to me, like, whether that's through email or Instagram, first just, like, hitting me up with a message. And then we hop on a call and um, they basically pitch their idea and say like they'd love me to do a video for them Mm -hmm. and um they tell me what the product is and if i choose to take that and you know move forward with the production and the client says yes to the offer and everything's gucci and ready to go then normally what i do is like i start working on the idea straight away maybe the client has um couple of like bullet point lines like already written down like what they want the commercial to be about or what they want to include in the commercial Mm -hmm. um but other than that, it's just pretty much me just trying to figure out like how I can tell their story, the best possible story with this product, mm-hmm. like whatever the product is. And uh, the next two weeks I spend in pre-production just planning the script out. And then I also get the product like, you know, sometime during that time. And then I hop on the production and normally the films are shot within three days time. Okay. Um, and then the next couple of weeks, tops all spent in post. So it's pretty fast turnover if you really think about it. Uh-huh. And a lot of things yeah. are overlapping. You're at, you're in pre production while you're also shooting probably for other products. Um, so it's yeah, all right. very it's very jumbled. I understand that. I, I feel the same thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Roughly. Right now, I got like yeah. Sorry. Go no, on. go ahead. You go ahead. What you got? No, like right right now, I got probably I got four 
Okay. Yeah, I got four videos that I'm filming right now. Okay. And I got three things in, uh, three different produc uh, productions in pre-production, and then I got two in the post-production. So wow. It's like juggling like everything plus YouTube. I mean, Throw YouTube on top of that you're, as well. That's, dude, you're, do you ever sleep? <laughs> yeah, I do sleep. Yeah, but uh, I, my uh, my fiance calls me like what, what do you say like a, like a night owl. Okay. So I tend to stay up pretty late here. We're at my studio and uh, yeah, it's just like you know editing into the evening. Working on my productions. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. All right. So um, you got all those roughly how many? commercials do you think you made last year in 2020? You don't have to give me the full number, you know, like exactly. Right. But what do you think? How many you did then? Oh, gosh. Uh, roughly around maybe 20, okay. 25. All right. All right. So, something like that, 20, 25. Um, you have any advice for anyone when it comes to, I'm still trying to figure this out myself too. And it's, Mm. Probably a question that everyone asks, and it's so vague. How do you find your customers? I do get asked a lot, like everyone gets how, asked do, how that. do I get clients? Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> and that's a YouTube video. Like everyone does the same thing. I mean, from my end, I'll just tell you what I always say. Like, mm. it's a lot of word of mouth, at least from what I'm noticing. I'm trying to market myself as much as I can and to find more people, but a lot of me yeah. right now is word of mouth. What's it like for you? Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely like a good way to start. Like, let's say if you're just starting out, um, I found my first clients like through family and friend circle. Yep. And um, from there, it was just like word of mouth, right? And then ever since then, I've been just like doing cold calls and just selling, 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 mm -hmm. and um, basically offering my services for free as well because. What I wanted to do in the beginning was just to build myself a portfolio mm -hmm. um, and just get better in general because I feel like nowadays, uh, this is not everybody, but I feel like this is some people nowadays, they expect to get like paid straight after they say, yeah, I'm a filmmaker, I do commercials now, right. give me this amount and I'll make a film for you. And then I ask, okay, what have you done? Well, I haven't done anything. And yeah. I'm like, okay, well, what am shouldn't I you like build a portfolio? Yeah, they're not gonna wanna yeah, pay exactly. you if they, don't, they can't see. Um, just kind of side subject here on that same thing is that's where I'm at. I'm trying to go towards commercial videography in the long run. That's mm. where I want to be. But I'm grabbing all the gigs, right? Anything that comes my way, I do. And that's hard because it's that transition point from just taking everything. Because I do educational yeah. content. I do um, a lot of corporate stuff. And then I don't do very many commercials. And I'm trying to find that yeah. transition. Um, and it's yeah, hard. it's 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 hard in the beginning for sure. I remember like I used to say yes pretty much to every single offer I got. Like if there was money involved, I'd, I'd say yes, I'll do it. Like yes, yeah. I know how to do this, which is good. I mean, I mean, obviously, it's learning. If you're gonna work twenty four seven, and you know, but it's I mean, it's good in a way where you also get to try out like, you know, what you like the best, like right. what sort type of videos you like doing the best, and. You know, it's not like very sufficient if you think about like doing that maybe, you know, for several years in a row, but it's good to sort of just to give yourself a, you know, green light to just try different projects out. And, uh, you know, if somebody offers you like, hey, can you do it like a food commercial mm -hmm. thing? Or can you do the short doc? Or can you come and film a wedding? Right. Yeah, definitely say yes and try them out. Like, mm -hmm. you might you might end up liking making wedding videos. Or, right. you know, you don't know until you try, right? So it's definitely a good thing to say yes in the, in the beginning, like when you first start out. Um, but now, like, obviously now we go, it, it's been like years since that moment when I first started right. and nowadays, I still do those cold calls. I still do, um, you know, uh, what do you call those, like spec commercials. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, you know, just try try my try them out and see what I like doing the most. Because as you grow, as you know, as you grow as a filmmaker, um, you also tend to like. You feel like you know you want you you want more at the same. Like it's yeah. hard to explain. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. So like, as you grow as a filmmaker, you never know like what you're gonna like maybe in a couple of months. Right. Or 
Ah, oh, it's hard to explain, man. I know what you mean. No, I know what you mean. Okay, so as as you grow as a filmmaker, you you if you're trying different things, you might find something that you enjoy more than others. One hundred percent. Right, and yeah. then and then go down exactly. that path. Definitely, that's where I'm at. I love this commercial stuff. I just don't. I'm on the two sides of it. I need to make more spec commercials. I need to do more YouTube stuff for myself for fun to kind of build that portfolio like you're talking about. Yeah. But I also have to juggle. You know, I have corporate customers and income, right? I got to pay for, you know, I got my wife, yeah. I got our home, you know, and, and I got to pay yeah. for those type of things. So there's that yeah, there's that juggle. And, and what I'm seeing is a lot of people are saying um, being a master of all or, be, you know, being being good at, at a little good at everything or being a master at one thing is like that transition point that you need to find. And I'm still trying to find it, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, if we if we look at commercial filmmaking or filmmaking in general, like ten years ago, mm -hmm. um, everybody was really good at this one thing, but there weren't that many people who could do a little bit of everything, right? right? And um, it's it's really good, like nowadays, to know how to do a little bit of everything. It's it's good to know yeah. how to write scripts. It's good to know how to sell. It's good to know you know, how to edit, film, do all those things. Because yeah. like productions are, you know, productions are only getting smaller. Yeah. And um, I feel like, you know, the general or, you know, how the production companies are or used to be, they're only, there's only gonna be less production companies in the future, I feel like, because I think brands are more and more getting, you know, involved with individual filmmakers who know how to do everything. Yeah. Um, it's, it helps if you got some, you know, some type of following mm -hmm. because then you're also able to give a little bit of extra something something for the brands and um yeah okay you're selling yeah, you're selling your following as well a little bit helping it helps i mean well i'm i'm not doing that because i don't consider my following to be that big i mean i'm very pri privileged to have a lot of people following me and it's amazing especially this whole youtube journey has been amazing so far and um, building up this community, like I, I don't consider like me selling my. I'm, I'm thinking about like bigger, bigger filmmakers who might yeah have, who have like hundreds and hundred k, half a million, million those type of yeah people, that are, people like that yeah 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 like then you're also selling that space that like you know but but you're still but you it's, hey, yeah you're you have thirty five almost thirty five thousand subscribers I believe on YouTube so that's really yeah thirty five k I want to say like congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, man. No, you still are. No, I mean, it's, that's it's, still a good amount of people. If you think about the video genre, you know, like who we are, our videos are marketed to, um, mm -hmm. I, and, you know, and you have an active audience. And that's, and I think that, that for any brand, that's still a great number. And that's still a great amount of, mm. I don't know, um, people that are going to view it. You know, it helps the brand out a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like because we don't have to go that far back. I remember talking about this with this older guy. I'm not gonna mention his name or anything, but um, he's one of those like old school filmmakers, right? right? He's a focus puller, yeah. and that's all he does. He's a focus puller, right? Um, I mean, right, dude. Where do you see a person who's just doing focus pulling being in five years' time? Right. Well, the only place I see them is on like a massive production. Yeah, TV film, right? Because that's yeah. that's who's gonna need that. And I'm not trying to talk like down on the oh. you know focus pullers here or anything. No, but no, and I I'm think just it's saying, a, like, I think it's a really cool career field. It's a lot of got to be a lot of fun to be on yeah. set like that every day. I just think that maybe there's um, not a bad thing to say, but maybe there's some of us to just look at it a little differently. Like you and me, we are one man bands, and yeah. I enjoy that. I enjoy being a one band one man band type of thing because yeah, it's definitely fun. Man. It is fun. Um, I like dipping my hands in the editing and the writing and the light and every. I know I know a little bit about everything and I and I enjoy that. Mm. So I think our mindsets might be more on building our own business, and yeah. someone like that, their mindset is more of kind of being an employee, and they're okay with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They have an exciting, 100%, 100%. fun job, and that's what they do. You know, I don't know. Hundred percent. Yeah, I just feel like if we go more like into the future, let's say five years, ten years from now, I feel like the number of production companies, it's gonna be a lot smaller. Right. Because, dude, like, if you have these one-man band, 
yeah. freelancers around the globe, and uh, they're already creating all these like cool ads that they and you yeah. know that they share on their socials, and brands notice those. Right. And um, who, who are they gonna reach out to? Are are they gonna reach out to these one man band right. freelancers or these production companies that they don't even know of? Right. They, like they need to go on their websites and uh, they don't have like large followings or anything. What I think is like, funny is I kind of see what's gonna happen, right? That company is gonna be like, oh man, I like that video by Joey. I like that video by Austin Paul. Um, you know, I like that video mm -hmm. by that other guy. And they're gonna they're gonna go to a production company and they're gonna show your videos as examples. And they're gonna be like, I want something like this. And that big production company, I feel like that's gonna migrate over time they're gonna realize why am i why don't i just contact these people like why am i you know mm -hmm. looking at these ads if i want this i need to talk to these people yeah so and that will that'll change over yeah. time yeah I, I think it's like really smart if if you're you know any type of artist mm -hmm. is that you push your work out there because you don't know who's gonna end up seeing your film or photo or mm -hmm. you acting if you're an actor or singing if you're a singer mm -hmm. um who knows like who's gonna end up seeing that right yep. and um there's so many there's so many like possibilities where just uploading that one video might take you yeah yeah so all right so the next thing i wanted to do here is i wanted you to go answer a couple of um simple pull up your instagram and have you show me maybe what is one of your most favorite commercials you've done it doesn't have to be the most favorite okay. maybe it's just a recent one that you really like what what's something you really enjoyed oh boy Let's see here. Uh, din, 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 din. Sorry if it's taking a little bit. Uh, you're you're fine. You're fine. Dude, fine. it's hard, man. Like, <laughs> you've you've made a lot of commercials. Oh so. my god. Okay, I'll pick. Okay, I got think Which one I got? got my pick. I think I got one. Okay, show me which one it is. Okay, we're going. We're going with Hyundai. Yeah, we're going with Hyundai. It was a, because okay. it was a long production and it really took some time and time and effort and everything. So I gotta pick that one. For how sure. was that production then? How how long was that production from beginning to end? Uh, starting from like me selling it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so yeah, I mean, so you sold it. I didn't even know that. How did how did you go about getting that? Commercial? Yeah. So, I've. In the Nordic series, Scandinavia, Scandinavia, like I've had a couple of different car brands as clients for a few years now, and um, mm -hmm. Hyundai also belongs to this um, corporation who's in charge of selling Hyundai and all these other brands here in the Nordics and okay. in some European countries as well. And um, okay, I'd never done one for Hyundai and. I just became friends with Austin like four months prior to that. Okay. This production, and uh, I remember asking Austin, or we were talking about me and Austin. We were talking. We were talking about like would be cool to do something together, and then right, it was like early spring, and I was like, oh damn, it would be cool to do like a car car commercial and shoot it like right all over the world and try to like make it look like it was specifically done for like larger international audience as well. And then yeah. I was like, damn man, like we, we should do one car commercial dude. And I was like, yeah, but who are we gonna make it for? I was like, hey, what if, what if I'm, I actually know these car brands here in Scandinavia, like what if I suggest them that we did one for Hyundai? And I pitched the idea to Hyundai and um, they liked it pretty much straight away said yes. Nice. And um, they fixed the car for Austin in the U.S. as well. And um, okay. fixed the car for me. And uh, yeah, the deal was basically just to create commercial that they could use in Scandinavia. And um, we, we get to do our thing for our socials and also tag them in that. And uh, I'm just trying to count the time, like how long that took. Well, we started like, I sold the idea in March. The film was done like, Early August was it? So I think so. Um, yeah, August eleventh is when you posted yeah. that. Is I remember you guys going through the process because I had talked to Austin Paul on the on the podcast when I first started my podcast mm. in the spring, 
and he brought up that he was doing a shoot with you, but he he, I don't, he didn't tell me what it was. It was kind of secret, yeah, right? Yeah. And then I saw him post, and he told me he's like, I gotta go travel for a couple days, and I, it's the middle of quarantine. And I'm like, what do you mean you're you're traveling? <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden, like a couple weeks later, um, I saw this Hyundai commercial, and I was like, oh, that is cool. So Hyundai set you so for everyone out there that's watching this. You guys need to check out their behind the scenes videos. I believe Austin's got one, and so does Joey. Yeah. I'll put links down below. Um, what they did is they created a Hyundai commercial, filming it on two other parts of the world. Yeah, and they made a, a, a commercial that looked like it was filmed across different ge- you know, different locations all over the, all over the world. Joey, you chose places that were specific to where you live that yeah. Austin couldn't film. Yeah, Nor- and Norway Austin and Finland. Filmed the ones. Yeah, and then Austin filmed here with like the redwoods and the salt flats and different things to make it just. What was cool about it is you guys had all these different locations that looked like this car had been driven all over the world. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was the and, idea we were, we were after. So yeah, yeah, and that was that was really cool. Did you? And then you guys both got a car. How many days did you guys have the car for? And you went out shooting for? Oof. Well, I had the car for myself for about like maybe a month, month and a half. Austin had oh, it wow. for okay. almost a month. And, um, oh, wow. yeah, obviously for so long, because like all these different, you know, locations that we had, like, we needed to have those cars for a long time. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah, man, it, it was, it was a cool project. I've never, I've never done a commercial that took me so long to make. Like I've done one like feature that. film where I was AD and I mean, obviously that that's a long, long production to do a feature film, but like never a commercial. So yeah, it was definitely cool, cool thing, uh, cool thing to film, and especially like, to, to film that together with Austin. And uh, it's also pretty funny because we never got to meet each other. We still haven't met, which is pretty funny, and we talk every single day uh, with Austin. You guys are gonna go live later today, I think. Oh right? uh, yeah, thanks for reminding like me. <laughs> it's, it's been a busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a busy day. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it was cool to sort of do a joint venture together with someone who you're not able to like meet in person. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I wasn't sure like how the whole thing was gonna turn out before we looked at the footage in the edit. Like the first shots that, I was the one who got the first shots. I immediately like sent those over to Austin and uh, he was like, yeah, it's gonna work out. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, it, it was a fun it's- thing to do for sure. What, so what's your most diff- so back to your Instagram and it might be the same video. Mm-hmm. What do you consider one of your most difficult ones recently? Yeah, to shoot recently. Oh, I mean, I'm still gonna include Honda did this one. Um, yeah, I mean, because there's a lot in that involved in that. Yeah, I bet difficult wise. Yeah, um, I mean, I've been playing a, playing a lot with fire in, in some of these. I've been videos. I've been seeing that you burnt your uh, your light a little bit. A little bit, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, there's not like one specific thing, one specific video that like was the hardest to make or anything. But like, it's always when you play around with fire. I feel like there's so many different things that just you know what can go wrong. So, right, uh, what happened? Ah, uh, well, the light thing is one, and uh, then there's there there's this one production that well. This was like years ago, but I was playing with fire again and uh, accidentally <laughs> set my girlfriend's hair on fire on set. And uh, oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a fun little. That was like my first fire experiment, like when it came to oh. like filming for, uh, commercials. So well, I'm not gonna let my wife watch this part because if I ever want to do anything fire-wise, she's usually my hands or my other person in my yeah. video. So yeah. I won't show her this. Yeah, no, don't. <laughs> Um, be cautious <laughs> is what I say. And, you know, if you have the opportunity to not to play with fire, do that. It's funny, like some people say, you know, you could just use, you know, stock footage or whatever. Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's not in camera or it, it's not your own. Yeah. That's the thing. Because I always like to film my own shots, whether that's playing with fire yeah. or whether that's whatever, you know, I, I don't like using stock footage that much. I mean, obviously if... You know, you need like stars to fill your skies or whatever, and it's a cloudy day, and it's the only day for that production. Yeah. Obviously, it's a different different thing. It's a different ball game in that case. But 
you know, if I'm filming right. here at my studio and I can freaking do a fire here, I'll do a fire here because, you know, whatever it takes to make the film right. yours. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go into my other my new my new segment of the podcast called Creator Rapid Fire Questions, okay? okay? I'm going to say I'm going to give you a blank or a blank and you just have to choose one. This is like what you would take to a desert island what, or what you like more than the other. Okay. You can look at it any way you want. Um, there's a lot of we're going to we got about 15 of these, okay? Awesome. You ready? Yeah, I'm I'm stoked. Let's go. Okay, here we go. This this first one is pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, little icebreaker. Photo or video? Which one do you prefer? Video. Video, of course. Me too. Okay. Handheld or tripod? Handheld. All right. All right. Slider or gimbal? Slider. Okay. All right. Soft light or hard light? Soft light. Okay. All right. This is just a random one I put together this morning. It, daylight or tungsten? Daylight, that's a really good question. Daylight, daylight, daylight. Daylight, okay, yeah, me too, me too. Camera or drone? Camera. Okay, yep, me too, yep, yep. All right, here we go. Now we got lens selection here. Okay. If you had to only choose one or the other, wide angle or a telephoto? Wide. Okay, all right. Would you choose a zoom or a prime lens? Zoom. Yep, yep. We got more options, right? Um... Wide open aperture or stopped down aperture? So, you know what I mean? Yeah. F2.8 or an F16? 2.8. 2.8, okay. An in-studio shoot or on location? Oh. Dude, this is a hard one. I bet, I bet. Oh, boy. I know it was like rapid, but... Dude, I, you're I'm, good. You're good. I like. I don't mind if you tell me a little more in depth what you're thinking. Dude, like because uh, there's pros and cons with both of them. Oh, okay. Man. I actually have some of those in this in this questionnaire, so you might we might come across more okay um, things that relate to this okay. whole you know in studio or on location. But which one do you think you prefer? Studio, because like then it's all up to me. Control. Like yeah, exa exactly. Everything's controlled. Okay, all right, so now let's go to backdrops. Would you wanna have a color backdrop or would you wanna do a no color? So black or white is no color or color background. If you can only choose one or the other. It's kind of an odd one, but. Yeah, I mean, I like all the colors and this and that, but recently I've loved using my black one, so I'm, I'm just gonna say black. So no yeah, color. Yeah. Okay. A 15 second ad or a 30 second ad? Oh, you know this, 15 second, of course. <laughs> voiceover or no voiceover? Oof. Oof. Um, I'm gonna say, I mean, I love a good voiceover, but I'm gonna say in this case, if I have to choose, I'm gonna say no, no voiceover, because okay. like it's then it's all up to the visuals. So, yeah. All right, all right. So now this one's kind of on the sound design part of it. Yeah. Would you, if you can only choose one or the other? Okay. Music or sound effects? Sound effects. Okay, all right, I like it. Now this is kind of back to that whole um, in-shooter on location. Would you rather be with actors or no actors? What are you feeling? So I've seen you do some actor ones. I've seen some of the really cool ones you did up that um, with the hot tub and all that, and you guys, that, that house. Yeah. You guys are doing a shoot, you had two actors there. Mm. And I, actor shoots are great, but um, if you had to choose, like, you, cause you, what would you do? I'm gonna say no actors. I feel like there's nothing against no actors you go ahead. in this case because okay. like it's it's always a bigger challenge to let's say if I was filming this coffee mug, right? Like how do I make yeah. this interesting? This can't talk, this can't de you know, deliver a line or anything, show any emotions. How yeah. do I make those emotions with this? So I'm gonna say yeah. no actors just for the okay. challenge. All right, okay. We already went over this a little bit earlier. We'll get your answer. Large crew or sh or small crew? Uh, small. Okay. Final Cut Pro or Final? I'm um, sorry. Fi uh, Premiere Pro or Final Cut? <laughs> I was like, what is that software? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new one. I just made up. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Premiere. Okay. All right. Windows or Mac? Mac. I'm guessing. Yep. Yep. Uh, we got down to the last two. Sony or Canon? Canon. Come on. Mm. 
Yep, yeah. Well, I'm a Sony shooter, so I, 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 I know, I know you like Canon. Um, and then if you only had last question, yeah, YouTube or Instagram? YouTube, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, me too. I, I wish I started earlier with YouTube, and uh, I have like many YouTube filmmaker friends who already started like ten years ago, and they said like, Joey, you should do YouTube. I'm like, ah, I'm... and uh, I only started like yeah. I really, really only started like eight months ago, so. Till that point, yeah. I've been just like sort of uploading whatever, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, YouTube, hundred percent. All right. Well, thank you for doing my um, my creator questionnaire. Yeah, dude, um, that was fun. It changes a little bit, little bit for each person. Um, and then I guess just the last thing, Joey, you want to give any advice for anyone out there that you know, um, starting out filmmakers that are watching this podcast that you know are trying to figure out what to do next and what to do first. Any advice for them? Yeah. Um, Try everything. Um, try everything and uh, just keep creating. Like, don't just wait for, you know, some person to walk over to you and ask if you were interested in, you know, doing a film for them. Mm -hmm. Create every single day if possible. Um, that's how you learn and just become a better filmmaker. That's, I think that's everything in a nutshell, I'd say. But that's still what I do. So, yeah. All right, everyone, this was Joey. Thank you for being on the podcast. Um, all of his information is down below. Links in the description. Follow him. Check out his stuff. Thank you, Joey, for being here today. Thanks, man. This was fun. All right, bud. All right. All right, everyone, this has been a Make Media Podcast, and we are out.